Hallo, dit is Herman Osterwick en welkom van Jeddah in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at Hims Ami, Hims Middle East. We're going to discuss the top 10 benefits of integrating the healthcare enterprise or IHC. So let's start with the first one and it is to increase the chance for plug and play. When we have medical systems, we want to connect them using communication standards. However, the problem is with these standards that they have too many options. For example, there could be different services that you can use to do the various tasks that you want to perform. There are many different trigger events, for example in the case of HL7. And if you have a particular command or service, the attributes or the data elements vary widely. Let's take an example. For example, the ADT message in the HL7 standard, ADT stands for Admission, Discharge and Transfer, has 60 different messages. Each message has 20 segments and each segment and have about 30 fields. So if we add it all up, we see that using this ADT, we could do that in 600 different ways, but using 600 different data elements. So you can imagine that the chance for interoperability is not that big because if one device supports, let's say, the data element 509, 510, 511, and the other device just happens to be listened to 403, 405, 406, we don't communicate. So the solution is to limit the optionality and if you now take for example the ADT in the integrating the healthcare enterprise, the IHC, that's limited to what is absolutely necessary to do the job that we need to do. In this case will be four messages instead of 60. They have only three segments and 10 fields. So we limit the communication exchange to 30 instead of 600 data elements. Another example will be using DICOM modality worklist. The DICOM standard, you see that there's at least 120 different attributes that can be filled in in this work list. In IHC, however, we limited that to 42 different attributes and then in particular defined what the matching key attributes were. For example, patient name, patient ID, the accession number or the requested procedure. Again, a tremendous reduction from 120 to 42. So what IHC does by limiting the optionality, by defining what exactly is needed, but as minimum necessary, we definitely increase the chance for plug and play. Because now, knowing that each device supports all these, for example, 30 data elements in ADT, and for example, the 40 attributes in the modality worklist, we know exactly what we can expect from the other device. The second benefit for using IHC is to reduce on-site testing. And how do we do that? Well, every year, there's an event in Chicago in January, and not only in Chicago, but there's actually several events around the world, in Asia, in New York, by which many vendors come together, as a matter of fact, literally hundreds of those. They take all their computer system, their medical device simulators with them, and we have a connectathon. A connectathon where we connect the systems and we do lots and lots and lots of testing. We test all the different profiles that are part of the IHE specification. As a part of a profile, a device can be an actor, and an actor is defined with a certain functionality that exchanges certain transactions. And so each of these devices can have one or more actors and they try to communicate to each other. The process is relatively simple. The device manufacturer will have to sign up for a connection and he has to prove that at least three other participants he is able to communicate. And there will then be monitors around, as you see in this picture, that check off whether a device meets the requirements for the IHC specification. So you can see that the major advantage is that instead of trying to figure out if there are any issues at the hospital site, this can be done at a neutral area in Chicago or wherever the location is for the connectathon, and we can resolve the issue there right at the floor. In addition, or as part of this connectathon activity, there are many different public domain tools and lots and lots of images. They can be used to test the application and the various profiles. And if you go to the IHC website, you can actually see the results of this connectathon testing. So to reduce on-site testing, 
to have a higher chance for interoperability by having these vendors working out the kinks between those systems in a neutral level playing ground so that we can prevent potential issues occurring in the field. The third benefit was provide value meal choices. Now you might wonder what does ISD have to do in the food business, but this is just to use as an analogy to show how you can actually pick and choose a set of functionality, a set of transactions, or I call it a value meal. So similar to when you go to a fast food restaurant, you can say I want value meal number three. In the case of the IHC, you can say, I want profile number three. Let's take an example. Let's take the profile for scheduled workflow. That's as do you have a scheduled workflow exam, provides continuity of orders and exams across his, his modality and packs. It's actually the, one of the most important profiles. And now, and if you look at a modality, for example, an MRI, what would supporting the scheduled workflow mean for an MRI? Well, the value meal or the value proposition or the profile in this case would specify that you will have to support as a modality, the modality work list, then modality perform procedure step and PPS. There will be a start for the MPPS indicating the start of the exam. Then there will be support needed obviously for a store, DICOM store to send the images and other potential objects that you want to exchange, such as presentation states, key images or whatever the MRI or modality provides. Followed by the second modality perform procedure step and PPS stop command, and also it will have to support storage commitment. So, can you imagine from a purchasing perspective, instead of having to say, I want one, two, three, four, five different components, you can just say, I want the value proposition or value meal schedule workflow. And you know for sure that you get all of those as part of your packets. And so each schedule workflow profile has this set of transactions and the set of services. And by selecting this profile, you know exactly what you get. The next benefit will be to eliminate gaps and avoid overlaps. One of the challenges are, if you would want to purchase equipment, is that vendors are very creative in coming up with very nice names that are not necessarily transparent. For example, you might go to a vendor and see, well, I have a workflow manager or a connectivity manager or a broker. And what do these systems actually do is not always quite clear. So another major benefit of the IHC is to define exactly what these systems do and find exactly how these systems are called. They have a name. So these so-called actors, for example, an ADT or a scheduler, an order filler, or a perform procedure step manager, or image manager, image archive, and so on. Those actors have a very well-defined functionality. What does that mean for somebody that's trying to purchase equipment or looking at a proposition of a vendor? Using those actors, the active specifications are part of what we call IHC integration statement. So using the actors, again, we know exactly what we're going to get because each actor had this very well-defined set of transactions, which, by the way, have exactly a very well-defined set of attributes. Remember, that was the reduction of the optionality. So instead of figuring out, well, my, uh, that vendor's risk system has this uh, functionality and the other vendor's risk has that functionality or the other vendor's packs has that functionality or the workflow manager has this, if you look at the integration statement, you know exactly, based on the actor support, what you get. You can see a sample integration statement of a fictional vendor product. In this case, it's a, uh, we call it a RISC 2003. But if you look in the column, Product name, actors implemented, you see exactly what this system does. It's a department system scheduler order filler, perform procedure step manager, and department system scheduler order filler. Also does patient information reconciliation. So there's no question about what it does. And now we know exactly what we need to have for this system to talk with to match that capability so we can potentially avoid gaps or even overlap. Let's say if this is what the RIS does, and if your PAX integration statement also has, for example, a perform procedure step manager, you say, wow, why do I need to pay for two systems that have the same functionality? So you go back to your RIS or your PAX vendor and said, why don't you eliminate this functionality? I don't need it. And can you give me another quotation that hopefully a little bit of a reduction in cost because that is something that I already have or that is provided by another vendor. The next benefit for using IHC is to address workflows. The nice thing about IHC is that the definition of actors and transactions is based on workflows. For example, a workflow might be to schedule an exam, to perform a procedure, or to create a report. Now, in many cases, when a system, everything works well, when everything goes exactly as expected, if there's no exceptions, then most systems work very well. 
However, if there are exceptions, in the case, for example, of an emergency patient, where there's incomplete information about the patient, or there's no information at all, we need to reconcile that. So not only does IHC address these standard workflows, there's also quite a few exception workflows that are specifically addressed. An example would be patient information reconciliation. In this case, the PACS would then update the radiology information system or the scheduling system about changes or updates in the patient information. And then again, this transaction is exactly defined in the IHC specification, what kind of transaction, and not only that, exactly what should be in the transaction, what options from HL7 are now required in the context of using IHC. So workflows, including exceptions, are very well defined in the IHC statements and in the IHC specifications.